This is one of my favorites. It's the last M3 from BMW. It's a performance weapon discreet enough to keep the trigger finger of your local radar cop from getting too itchy. It has a list of go-fast goodies that reads like a boy racer's Christmas wish list, and a cabin and ride quality that mean you can drive this top dog extreme performance machine every day of the year, even if you're just going to Sears. As a performance car with the ability to put on a performance, a show if you will, this was about as good as it got. The way this M3 made you feel, the soundtrack, the theater, and the performance that it puts on are all virtually unbeatable. That's because of how the steering was tuned and the lightweight, high energy, big precision feel dialed into it, the lightning fast gear changes, and of course because of this, a 4 liter, 414 horsepower, hand built, high strung V8 engine which sings a glorious song as it winds to its 8300 RPM redline. Let me show you what that's like. So that was the last generation BMW M3 Coupe. You could get a sedan or a convertible as well, and all of those have just been replaced by this all new generation model. Same premise really, top notch, top dog, top dollar performance car, and two more versions of it are now called the M4. Let's take a closer look. It's not BMW M4 convertible season, and the computer even said it was too cold for me to put the roof down. But many Canadian shoppers are demanding performance coupes and convertibles that don't need to be stored in winter, and this is one of them. Outside, it's even more discreet now. Same venting and bulging fenders and big air openings and massive wheels and brakes as before, but especially finished in white paint. This is one of the most discreet looking 90 plus grand cars I've ever seen. The interior goes the other way. They've stepped the new one up a whack. There's carbon fiber, more depth, more craftsmanship, more technology and screens and interfaces, and all the next generation features and tech you could shake a stick at. You can even get weather forecasts in the central screen and write your inputs into the navigation navigation system with your finger. The new seats are gorgeous and the little M4 badges on the headrests just above these vents that pipe hot air onto your neck light up at night when you get on board too. And center stage, the signature stubby electronic M shifter which can engage all of the gears and the manual mode which you can access via the paddles. So what's under the hood? The engine in that last M3 was just the craziest. The little strung out V8 would rev endlessly, sounded gorgeous in the most raw and mechanical way possible, and put on a hell of a show when you clicked away on the shift paddles that kept the massive red line within striking distance at all times. I loved it. And now this new engine is a lot different. In a way, it gets back to the car's roots. It's a straight six, which used to be the norm for years. But this one is, well, very twin turbocharged, lots of boost. You get 425 horsepower and way more torque than that old V8 too. And all of that with better mileage and less emissions. It's a completely different character for the car. It revs less, there's more power everywhere and more torque the instant you put your foot down. It feels different and sounds different and makes the M4 a bit of a different car. Different because screaming furious revs have been benched in favor of monster low end torque. Put your boot down and you can hear the twin intercooled turbochargers hissing into action as the exhaust note deepens and the M4 surges along alarmingly quick right now. The 3 liter engine is smooth, very potent and still kicks the rear tires loose when you click for an upshift in the transmission's high performance shifting mode engaged by the little M button on the steering wheel alongside numerous other go fast system calibrations. The anticipation and rising action that characterized that high-strung V8 in the old car take a back seat here. The new engine is more urgent. More of the action happens at much lower revs after a whiff of turbo lag. The acceleration might make you wonder if there's a rocket thruster sticking out in the back. It's torquier, faster, more responsive across more of its revs, and better on fuel too. On paper, it's a better engine. But I do wish they'd paid off the greenies and kept the old V8 around. The new engine doesn't sound as good. It's less angry and mechanical and more snorty and less entertaining. They pipe in synthesized engine noise over the speakers to help compensate. And there's less of a shape and a surge and a climax to the power curve. It all just hits at once and stays on strong. Faster, but for fans of screaming revs, it's less exciting. You do get auto stop and more of the engine's power delivered in an on-demand fashion thanks to the turbos, so you wind up using less fuel more of the time. In fact, on my watch, even in the cold on less fuel efficient winter tires and with a heavier convertible body, mileage landed at 10.7 liters per 100 clicks, a big improvement over the 12 or more I averaged in two test drives of the last generation car. So the technology works, and in the snow, she's just fine. 
winter tires on, and rear-wheel drive can be just beautiful when the going gets greasy. And with a fast-acting traction control system, a rear differential, it constantly watches for slip and makes millisecond adjustments to eliminate it. And a very intelligent anti-lock braking system, I had no issues with traction. Unless you live in the very far north, I don't think you really need to put this one in the garage after October. Mind you, you probably will, and that would be a shame. Though most of the power does go to waste on snowy roads, it's still a car you can enjoy driving gently. There's a great big Harman Kardon stereo. The responsiveness dialed into the brakes and steering here is pleasing indeed, just like the last car, even when you're not in a hurry. And when you don't have the M mode turned on, the M4 is happy to quiet down, be gentle, and play nice. For all the power and grip and performance, it's an easy car to drive peacefully when required. Oh, do I miss that screaming little V8 though, which is why living up north I might have to give this a serious look as a cross-shopping exercise. It's the Audi RS5, maybe not quite as razor sharp as the M4, but priced similarly, has a cooler name, goes like the wind, looks fantastic, and it's got all-wheel drive so you can use more of the power more of the time. And here, that power still comes from a V8 engine that does 8,000 RPM, yes. Alright, so let's sum up BMW's Top Dog Big Boost 4 Series, shall we? You'll like the split personality between relatively peaceful cruiser and twin turbo track weapon, the heated seats, neck warmers and steering wheel, the massive power and the discreet looks if that's your thing, and the fact that although you probably won't drive yours in winter, you could if you wanted to. You might wish for a gentler ride on some surfaces, this is a performance car and often rides like one, plus if you put the roof down, you do lose a fair bit of trunk space. End of the day, here's a summer-oriented tour that can be enjoyed in the winter as well, helping maximize the return on investment of no less than $84,500 if you go for the convertible like the tester. The hardtop coupe starts at 75. Thanks for watching.